And a good morning to you, Russ. And we all know about winterizing your car, but it's spring, so we also have to do some spring tune-ups for our car. Jody and Riaz, we will tell you what will happen if you continue to drive with your snow tires in the city during the spring. Exactly. I mean, I make the assumption that when the snow is gone, we should probably take our snow tires off. Is that right, Sam? Absolutely. Yep. This time of year, it's important to take the snow tires off, put your all-season tires on. You'll get better gas mileage that way, and you won't wear out your winter tires. Okay. And what about the ride when you have the winter tires on? Does that change how it feels on the road as well? It definitely does. The winter tires are a more aggressive tread, and they're a little noisier and a little rougher. So when you go to the all-season tire, it's a much smoother tire. Now we should point out if people are still going to Whistler, yes. obviously, should they keep the winter tires on for Absolutely. now? Absolutely. Okay. If you're any mountain driving, Coca, Isle, Whistler, keep your, your, uh, all your winter tires on. This is a winter tire here. You can see it's a fairly aggressive and noisy tread. This is an all-season tire here and a much smoother tread. So you'll get a quieter ride out of that. And in the lower mainland, that's what we run through the, the summertime. This is going to sound like a stupid question. I mean, we're past winter already, but all season, wouldn't we be able to drive with that in the winter and then just kind of keep one tire on the whole time? No, you really need winter okay. tires for mountain driving. All right. And, and of course, tire pressure is very important too. When you change your tires, you have to have the correct pressure. We have a gauge here. We can check the tire pressure. But they should all be in the 30, 32 area for most cars and light trucks. Excellent. Some great tips here at Tremblay Motors. We're going to continue to, I want to say, get our car ready for spring. It's kind of like a spring tune-up all Absolutely. morning long here on Breakfast Television, Jody. You know, Justin Bieber, someone who could stand to put on a belt once in a while, pull up his pants. We're talking belts of a different kind, right, Sam? We are indeed. So what do we need to know about our spring tune-up when it comes to our belts? Well, we want to get under the hood and check visually under the hood. The, the serpentine belt, as we call it now, which you might know as a fan belt, it's very important for us to keep an eye on that, make sure there's no deep cracks. Nowadays, there's one belt that runs everything on the car and if that belt breaks and you're stuck at the side of the so road. So nowadays meaning older cars might have... Nowadays the one belt runs right. everything. The old cars had three or four okay. belts. So by just checking the underside of the belt for any deep cracks, that's the kind of thing we're okay. looking for. And then fluids. Under the hood we're looking at the fluids. Here for example is the engine oil. We check that regularly. We pull the stick out, wipe it off, stick it back in and just make sure it's at the level it should be. How often so, should we be checking our oil? You know, once a month, Okay. unless your car is burning oil, but once a month you should check it. Okay. This here is the coolant reservoir. That's for your radiator, and the fluid is visible on the side. If we shake it, we'll actually see it down there. We check that regularly as well. Uh, over here is the power steering. It's clearly marked up on top here. Power steering fluid. There's a little dipstick in there to make sure there's enough fluid in there. Also, we should be topping up our windshield washer regularly, and that's Especially easy. Especially this yep. time of year. This time of year, it's easy just to open that up and pour in your windshield washer and keep that topped up. And also, just a general visual check under the hood. Make sure that it should be relatively dry. Okay. If you've got oil leaks or coolant leaks and you see something leaking, then it's time to get into the shop. How does the warmer weather affect our fluids, or does it affect our fluids? It does. Levels? Everything works a little harder in the warm okay. weather, especially if we're climbing the Coquihalla. So we'll tend to go through a little more coolant. You tend to go through a little more engine what oil. about the air conditioning? Does that affect? anything as far as air conditioning affects the amount of mileage uh, gas okay. mileage you get too so when you're running your air conditioning that certainly does affect mileage. okay but under the hood it doesn't affect anything no nope, it just runs a little hotter that's okay all. there you go lots of great information from Tremblay Motors as we get our car ready for spring for more details on Tremblay Motors you can go to their website we've got lots more coming up throughout the morning Jody right now we are talking about ways to I guess improve your gas mileage right yeah. Uh, Brad yeah so what do we need to do as we get ready for spring to do that uh, there's a few things you can do to your car to make sure you're gonna get good fuel economy uh, the number one would be your tire pressures. Okay. So if you uh, if you check your tires, we come over here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to pull off the valve stem cap, check the tire pressure, and on the tire it'll say what the PSI can oh, be okay. at the maximum. So if you read the tire on the sidewall somewhere, it's going to say what the maximum pressure is. Over here it says down here. All right. It doesn't necessarily mean you want to pump it up that full. Okay. You might want to go check your door because it has what the recommended tire pressure for that particular car is. It's usually between 30 and 35 on most vehicles. So tire pressure is the number one thing you can do easily to improve your fuel economy. Okay. Other than that, it's obvious stuff. Not idling your car too long. A lot of people think they should warm their car up in the mornings for you know a couple minutes. Just two trains of thought to that. Um, but for better fuel economy, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, not starting your car like you're a race car driver, you know, and start subtly and start, you know, normally. Now, what about people too that are perhaps putting away a car for the winter and they need to preserve it and get it ready for the spring next year? I know that we had an incident uh, even at the station where people think that just starting your battery or starting your car periodically, even though you're not driving it much, will actually recharge the battery. Is that the case? Not if you do it shortly. If okay. you were to start the car and drive it for over an hour or so, it gives your car time to, to actually re
recharge the battery, but the right thing to do is to disconnect your battery when you park it for the winter or the summer, and then get bring it to a shop and have it recharged. If you were to drive it for a couple hours, that will quite often okay. do the job, but it's not reliable. There you go. Well, for more details on what you should do and what you shouldn't do, of course, you can check out uh, Tremblay Motors. We're here all morning long, Jody. Uh, again, as we're getting our car ready for spring. Yeah, thank you very much. And you know, for anyone that's getting ready to head on one of those long road trips, which we often do in the summer, Brad, there are some things that you definitely have to bring your car in for, yeah. but there is a great test that people can kind of judge themselves whether it's time to bring the car in, right? Yeah, definitely. If your car has a problem with the front and the alignment, quite often your tires will, will show you that. And when you look at this tire here, you can see that on this one side, it's really smooth and there's hardly any tread remaining. On this side, you have a bit of tread left. So clearly this car had a problem with the alignment where it was leaning one, too much on one side. And if that's the case, your car is probably not going to drive straight. It might pull left or right. And something in the front end is going to be broken. And whenever people think about front end, they always think of just shocks and suspension, but there's a lot of parts like your ball joints, upper ball joint, there's a lower one underneath that you can't really see. And there's also sway bar links, and any of these front end components can, can break and then cause your car not to steer straight and be unsafe. Okay, what about that squeaking sound or that ski? sound you hear sometimes with the brakes. Yeah. That, that to me is a, a warning sign right there. Yeah, brakes will do the same thing. Yeah. They'll give you a warning. And here's a good example here. This is a, a new brake pad that has a brake pad squealer built onto it. So when the brake pads wear down a certain uh, amount, that squealer is going to rub against the rotor, kind of like a needle on a record. And it's going to tell you to get your car in the shop. If you ignore it, it's going to cost you a lot more money. Yeah, that's a good thing. Like it's almost like we said, when, you're, when your knee hurts, get it, you know, get it fixed first because otherwise you're, you know, other things will suffer. Your hip will suffer, your back will suffer. Yeah. It's the same with the car, right? Yeah, it's a domino effect. You don't fix one thing and then you, it, something else will get more expensive. And so this will all help us with the keep our rides smooth for those great road trips, right? It'll be safer and it'll be a better trip. There you go. Well, for more details on Tremblay Motors, you can, of course, go to their website. But again, uh, Jody, it's all about getting your car ready for spring. And if you take care of those small problems first, you'll ensure a safe trip throughout the summer. Great analogy. You know, you got to keep those joints oiled and keep, you know, your knees feeling good.